Saturn and Uranus. Uh, so, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah, so a grand, a grand air trine. And then Mercury and Pisces. So, you know, three three houses in a row or three signs in a row, uh, back to back. And then Mars and Taurus. So lots of diversity here. Um, and then moon in Virgo. So I was interested also with Uranus on the midheaven, um, and then of course the North Node in Sag in the twelfth house, with uh, Neptune in the twelfth house also is very interesting because, I mean, my first kind of intuitive flash of this whole thing is there's a lot around, um finding truth a lot, a lot around communicating it. Um, I see how the mind in past lives has, has, has kind of been, has kind of been like a torm has, has, has had some of like a tormenting effect. Um, and, you know, having the moon Virgo with, So that helps you with things like astrology and, and the arts and and uh, you know Mercury and Pisces get gets a bad rep because you know people think of like a strong Mercury as being something that can just go and just just analyze and go through data and this and that and um. It's 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 not necessarily. I I don't think Mercury and Pisces is is. Um, I think like sometimes they can lack in the logical sense, like their their minds can be a little bit cloudy sometimes, a little bit foggy. But they are always super abstract, kind of right brain. But it's interesting because you you combine that with the calf and the the, the just very Saturnian self, right? 
um, Cap Rising, right? Venus and Cap, uh, Alice and Cap, you know, all, all of these are giving you this very advantageous energy. You know, in, in Black Moon there could even be, you know, it, it, it's like important to use Integ like to like like it's it's very important to to have integrity in your dealings um because i think when i when there's when i think like a black most first house in cap i would think okay there's the lowest i would see that person would be for them with their lowest vibration to step all over people to um, kind of almost bully i'm not saying you do that i'm just saying that it's Potential, right? That's what I'm looking at. It's you at your lowest self, self defeating. Right? And, uh, that's what I mean. It creates some sort of like gifts. Comes to self defeating. It's a type of question. You should tend to. Yeah, so I think like when you have places like that, it's there. You mentioned the point of discussion, of course. Um, Square in your ears. It's a real kind of valuing that more traditional masculine energy like very very secure energy um but then you throw the retrograde which is very rare which is around seven percent or so of people or less six or seven or eight i don't even remember the exact statistic but around that have a natal venus retrograde very rarely in retrograde and um what that means is that it's almost like there's a do-over in this uh incarnation it's almost like it's a do-over and that something in relation to because a lot of people think of venus as is you know romantic love as the only thing but it's really self-love that gets externalized so yeah having it having it there is is, is definitely difficult in the sense of um, having to overcome lots of of kind of uh, barriers to to finding that, um, and it can make one very very picky, right? Now here's the thing with the retrograde also is that it can make someone really look at um, you know overanalyze kind of their love life and, and put too much. That can be like a codependent streak. Up. I kind of kind of notice you get the kind of kind of streak where one places so much importance on relationships that it goes against their greater good. Now, when the mid heaven and Uranus are squaring that position. Very interesting, too. Because what that shows that, in terms of like a career, fashion, just like that, you're going to find in the area of the 12 houses represent 12 different areas of reality.
will have the same options for all different areas of reality, right? Uh, and house one, which there's you know, a lot of things in it, is the house of the self, right? So independence, body, action. It's, it's like those like areas. So it's sort of like it is the first house. You know, like just let's take a step, 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 one step at a time, right? Because you're very interested in the in the love side of things, so I want to focus on that while also giving you like a full understanding chart. So, because it, it it ultimately does all work together, but basically, um, so this 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 part of the chart, first house, Venus, tends to like independence within relationships and it's it's uh usually a very good indicator of self-love although in capricorn there is lots of barriers around that so then when you put on the retrograde um it creates that difficulty in this sense you know with black and lilith conjunct it you know in relating to like relationships become almost too important. And there's a, a semi-sextile with, with a note or quincunx even. It's a it's an exact quincunx with Venus in the south node. Yeah. So um it's definitely something from past life that has hinder, hindered you. Um and the way it's showing up here is that there's part that wants this independence that wants this this very secure life but also life where you can be doing your own thing right you're in Aquarius Aquarius is all about freedom um and then you're mid heaven as you're just the, the ruler makes you very good for you especially in the house that you've left it it's like you're, you're gonna have a power plan or anything no matter on the debtor like the degree to the degree it's very important which just means that that plan features a lot in your career. People see you, so you're seen very important. Um, but yeah, very, very important. You know, it's, it's a zero. It's still, you know, it, it trying to start itself. So that part of you is very strong. Always looking for new new ways of doing things, and uh, it's, it's it's very much about liberation. So you deal with liberation, and I'm not saying about the spiritual type of liberation, but more about on an individual level, like individualism, and how to how one can liberate themselves really. So this type of configuration is that we can start to see relationships that lack this kind of completeness as like almost the person self. And uh, it's definitely difficult. And uh, yeah, square Venus and Uranus, it kind of it, it, it relates to this, uh, this difficulty, this struggle between career and the importance that, that has for you um it's not just career it's like just like you know you your outer like the dharma you know what distinguishes you and since it is you know the ruling planet of your your son it's like a huge part of, of your life so it's like you have to think of like hey, what does that represent and then you throw in there the fact that um You know, you are a Capricorn rising. All Capricorn risings are gonna, you know, that's that 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 is the 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 sign that rules the tenth house. So there's always gonna be that let's get things done energy, right? So when it comes to love, we have to also look at the moon sign. It's in Virgo. 
in the ninth house. So the moon sign is very important because you know it's the most important. It's what it's it's not what we want. It's not it's what we need. It's our instinct. So I don't think you can really be with someone where you know the moon signs needs aren't met. So when you have moon and Virgo, um, you know your 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 emotions are ruled by the planet Mercury. And the planet Mercury is about logic, right? It's not really about. It's not really. It's not really about emotions like about cancer. You know what I mean? It's it's, it's more analytical. And sometimes people with Virgo have struggle with things like anxiety disorders from overthinking, uh, rumination, overanalyzing. Uh, yeah. Just running, 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 running that same thing through their head over and over. So this all actually relates to your like, grand plan, your chart, because I would have that. But, you know, South Node in Gemini, right? But, uh, it's Saturn, we've seen so many of our cards lately. That's so bizarre. I had to stop it. Saturn. There is definitely like a part of you who's very authoritarian. Uh, and also who you know, could even be that you're very, very karmically linked to like, your father or someone, someone like that. But not necessarily in a bad way, but I mean, basically, there's energy there that can make it difficult to deal with emotions. Um, and then we can add the fact that Saturn squares the moon. That adds issues, you know, with uh, vulnerability, with issues with depression a lot of times, but the tendency towards melancholy and depression. And, um, you know, just the moon squaring the, the south node also, there's just like a lot of inner work that that needs to get done in this lifetime. Um, and the way that that's done is through the north node in Sagittarius in 12th house. Which is literally a mix of Pisces and Sag, which is what I am. The irony of this. Um, and, you know, it's it's really like asking you to leave behind kind of these um old ways of patterns of seeing the world and seeing reality and it's asking you to open up to new potentials you know the new potentials of uh what's possible and to just continuously lean in to the uncomfortable. Um, so with the Virgo moon, you know, it could be through finding avenues to express your emotions because, you know, lo lo lacking water in the, in the chart, but the, in Mercury is really the avenue. It's interesting, right? Because Mercury is uh, the ruler of the South Node, but it's in Pisces. So, and Pisces is the twelfth house for the North Node. So it's really like God or you know, your higher self over you know, kind of you know like I just created this chart. Um it's asking you to really lean into spirituality, really learn to lean into kind of a balanced reality. Um And you know, when you combine Sag and Pisces together, you get Jupiter, which is expansion, right? Just uh, higher learning, higher wisdom, higher truth. So, and there's lots of, you know, Neptune and 12th and, 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 and uh, 
Hurricane Pisces, which is in two very psychic placements. create like lots of paranoia um difficulty it goes back to that that kind of like thought process right like difficulty really sensing um the reality of what's happening in situations um and you can be really 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 good at understanding especially since your moon is you know it's close to the star de nebula which is about higher learning as well and truth finding, truth seeking. Um, just overall, finding creative outlets is, is in spiritual outlets is like a, a must because it can be quite confusing. But with that said, close these down a little bit. With that said, um, there is a huge mix of different variants here. Um, so, a, you know, you're you're there's the the big career focus. People who have Uranus on the midheaven have a very special, unique thing that they're supposed to do. And you have Jupiter, the the planet of expansion in Aquarius on your sun. So that's going to give you some some very like um amazing ability to really want to learn about things like astrology and, and you know different, different uh, unconventional subjects. But with love, you know, just 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 having a Venus retrograde on its own. In, in Capricorn, squaring Uranus, I just think that there's this probably this back and forth between uh, wanting this independence, wanting this very secure relationship. But then also, yeah, that's the initial show that you know, which is attached to the working for like a very stronger Aquarius. So, like, a real need for somebody to give lots of space, allow you to be your authentic self. But then you couple that with a square. Uh, that square of fairness. And it's like, you usually would see that like, okay, this is someone who. That's difficult to usually find the balance between their career and their big picture life and their love life. But really, when you need to start to create, you know, yeah, like I've seen it time and time again, but just this. Uh, Obsession, kind of like with uh, like this obsession with um like like for example, when asked how how are you doing, um it could be based on you know the relationship life completely. So it can definitely. Bring up 
yeah, codependency. Um, but there's also lots of fate in there, right? Um, so the whole goal from a karmic perspective is like a reassessment of how one is in terms of, of, of relationships, but also self-love and also external externalized love. Um, and lots of like destiny encounters for sure. Um, but with, with that Capricorn, it's like lots of difficulty with, all, you know, with the square of the moon Saturn. Um, it comes, it comes down to like receiving love and affection and difficulty there. Um, how there can be like sadness and love, hardships, delays. And a lot of times there's like, you know, like I said, like there can be social anxiety with, with, with that, that placement or sadness, shyness, whatever, you know? Um, and yeah, it's all about past life relationship issues. Um, so sometimes people will have this like hurt someone in the past life um, that they love, they had an affair, like that. But whatever happened in the past life prevented. Um, set lots of fate because there's the quincunx with the south node you can be sure that you know there is some issue around um around that around around uh around love so um I would I would think that the ideal partner would be someone who, like I said, get, like gives freedom. But then there's also the, the classic Venus square Uranus is the person who then get, you know, like it's 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 a very tough balance to find between security and freedom. Um, but you really free yourself when you start to if this is something that affects you, right, in this way, right, which is with many of my clients, if it's something that affects you psychologically where there is that codependency, there is that kind of this is all that matters energy. Not necessarily this is all that matters, but like, like you know, this being like the most important thing. Um, yeah, that's when, that's when it can get difficult for sure. Let's see here. So then, okay. And I think, yeah, just like like the fact that sixth house, um, south node with Saturn, that's something completely different. I think that is a different parting chart where that is showing how you were very much like conditioned in past lives. Um, you know, 
this current time would be like Okay. So yeah, um, lots of fate in relationships, lots of fate, lots of fate, lots of fate. But then the next thing, you know, the very basic thing is like, okay, well, with the, the south node there, um, Saturn right on it, Gemini, it's kind of like a Saturn Capricorn kind of south node, in the sixth house Virgo. So you put all those signs together, you have you know, someone who, who's who's working a lot, someone who's who's you know very ma probably very masculine, maybe even dominant energy. Um, but because of that, the nature of whatever work that you're doing, think of like someone who works on like Wall Street or something like that today, right? Are they really getting into spirituality? You know what I mean? Like that's like an example. Um, or someone who runs like a huge company. Like, are they really able to have that that time, that space? And there is lots of great leadership energy in your chart. Um, you know, anyone who has Jupiter on their sun has like a very large, um, expansive kind of self. Like it's... Not necessarily like a, 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 it's a very good, very good placement. They're usually very, you know, very philosophical, really, really open minded, usually quite funny too. And um, in the second house, it's about, you know, it's Taurus energy. It's, you know, Mars is in Taurus, right? So it's about, solidifying the self and really finding values that you can stick to, that you can basically subscribe, subscribe to. Um, and because the North Node's in the 12th, in Sag, in, on the Galactic Center, it's a clear indication that there hasn't been enough in the, that spiritual realm. Um, which I think, I don't think the spirit, I think, I think you can think of that a way easier way to think of that is thinking, thinking of it like uh, a look within, you know, looking within the self. Because some people, I've seen charts like this and talk to the people afterwards, and um, there can be like a tendency, yeah, just 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 to take things a little bit too seriously, also, and and um, to focus too much on areas of, of life that that, they, that, that that like that come very easy right like for you it would probably be succeeding in whatever you put your mind to you know um you have you know the water placement of mercury which is the difficult one but it does also give you that um ability to kind of sense um to have that intuition but but like the thing with mercury square neptune is that lo lots like i said lots of paranoia and lots of, like it can it can make it can make one understand the highest abstract ideas but then when it comes to like the very base thing it's like how are you doing for instance how are you doing there can be like an over analysis of that like what they mean what they mean what they mean so a deep dive into 
the unconscious into the subtle energies is what can really provide lots of um, uh, healing, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, like what, like earth and air are just very like well covered. I mean, you, you have your, your grand trine, your, your air grand trine, which is very good for intelligence in earth houses. Um, but then the North node, you know, which is like I said, like the destiny point is in fire in Sagittarius. And when you lack fire in your chart, there can be difficulty when it comes to self-starting, when it comes to getting yourself out of funks, when it comes to like really finding the things you're passionate about. So that's always an indicator for me when someone has their North node in an element where they don't have any supporting plants. I always think, okay, that person is really meant to, it's, it's an advanced soul. It's someone who, who, you know, has, has taken on something difficult. Um, so traveling is also, also something that could really help being in different countries. You know, your moon's in the ninth house also house of, 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 you know, Traveling physically, traveling metaphorically is what I would say about truth seeking, right? So you're really looking for, for you know, you're trying to get away from kind of like the scattered path um, where you may have had a tendency to focus on too many things at once. And um, it kind of pushed you away from being able to experience the wholeness of everything that is. Now, there's lots of other parts that chart, like the Mars, for example, in Taurus, the fifth, you know, I look, I think of that as um, a real part of your chart where you can find, it can actually really help find creative passions. It can give one like a drive towards, especially in Taurus, like making their pastimes, making the things that you do, that you do find fun um your work which is amazing when if you have uranus on the midheaven um and you had pluto in the 10th also so yeah there's really this huge part of you that is here to to kind of reclaim something when it comes to to dharma career outer life um and to do it in a different way in a way that's not conditioned, you know, in a way that's very true to you. Um, but with the Virgo moon, square Saturn, that's where like a lot of like self-limiting beliefs can show up and um, it can be difficult to kind of move, move out of the logical into the more metaphysical. Yeah, so... Yeah. And of course, of course, of course, Chiron is in Aries. I just wrote a post about this the other day about how when like I've been doing a reading, I didn't look at the Chiron for a while, then I look look at it. Yep, it's in fire. So that adds to this where there's um some pain around self assertion, around um personal power, around um assertiveness and truly feeling like third chakra, like truly feeling like you can do it. You can do it. You can put your mind in something and just do it. And fourth house, you know, conjunct IC, it can come from, you know, early family dynamics. Just said with your moon, you know, square Saturn, there can be, it could have been like a mother or early nurturing that you experience is very structured and, and perfectionist and kind of like mimicked the past life energy where you may have felt like, you know, your worth was 
based on, you know, how well you can do in school or how well you can produce in certain areas of, of, of life. But then the soul, because the soul is trying to get here, right? The soul is trying to get to the 12th house, the edge <coughs> with Neptune there. There's this massive need to learn to kind of liquefy some of that energy. And, you know, the mercury, which is the mind, is, is you know, some meditating things like spiritual pursuits like that can be very, very good as they can kind of clear some of the fog that might exist. Um, and then help you kind of establish that, that real sense of, 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 of individualistic self of, you know, a real, yeah, real individualism. Um, that's being asked for here. Let's see. But yeah, I mean, I think like the the moon already is like very karmic, your moon sign. And to have, especially, but when you square the nodes, it makes it extra karmic. So Virgo moons can be unconsciously perfectionist to a point to where it just, really really hurts them they have to like look at the opposite sign which is um pisces you know where your mercury is um and learn to you know north node in 12th house to learn to kind of see the big picture to learn to let to just let things flow let, let things go um and yeah, I mean, there's just so much, like, there's just so much going on. Mars. And even the Mars and Taurus, it can help you achieve things. But then, yeah, there, there's just really this this need to kind of like um, really like find that fire. That's kind of what what it's really asking you: finding that 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 higher purpose, that higher wisdom, higher truth. And you know, part of that, you know, is about taking risks. Um, taking risks. You know, going to this place. Going, um, uh, you know, learning about this type of you know whether it's astrology or whether whatever it is you know anything that can help empower you um spiritually is gonna really calm down any any of those virgo moon tendencies um in which you know to hit yeah north node hit hit last Hmm. <clears throat> What's that there? It's looking at some trends. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing is that the son, which usually is the father, is uh trining the south the south node, so it's like Usually that would mean that the, the relationship with the father, whoever the more dominant parent was, would be more positive. Um, so it would seem as though there would be one parent that would have had a more detrimental effect 
while there'd be another one that would have had like a more um, enlightening one, a more um, perspective giving one. So I think you probably know which one that is. And aside from that, um, one second. second all right i'm back in a new location um i got banished not banished but in this weird little bunker it's not a bunker but it's a private room um as I said, I'm at my mom's, so this is my usual environment. But even this room is weird. <laughs> um, it works. I don't know. I have this thing where I just don't like. Maybe it is a Mercury in Pisces thing, where like, especially when I'm doing a reading for a client, like I just don't like people hearing me. Anyone. Um, so let's go back to that. It's nice that I got like a little, I don't know, like 10, 15 minute break away from the chart. See it with different eyes. Um, we get situated here. It's a weird, not a desk. It's like makeshift, makeshift desk at best. Not the green feels. Okay. Closer. So yeah, I mean this chart is just super like like not in a bad way. It's very like all over the place. Like it's a very complex chart. Um and to me, like there's there's something the things that stand out are one, the past life conditioning, and you and a big, big need to individuate in this lifetime, right? The whole union and individualization, right? The whole idea of like, I'm sure you know it, but just as an Aquarius especially. But that's like why you're an Aquarius. You know, that's why you, you have that sun sign. It's because you're meant to shine in a different way. And I feel like you've really conquered like the consensus reality kind of, I don't know. That, that energy, right? That compared to like the modern day like CEOs or whatever, you know. And in this life, it's really about assimilating like your intuition um, and really like building, like, like really expanding yourself in a way that's non material. Anyone with a 12th house north node there's going to be this level of like the soul is desiring to move away from Virgo is, is, is striving to move away from your moon, right? Like self-limiting belief. Um, kind of like the little OCDs that one can have if one's worrying about this one day, this the other day, nothing. This is you. I'm just saying like, like as a, as a, as a, as a uh, and Saturn, right? It's, it's, it, you know, Saturn, a great metaphor I like to use for this is like, you have a tense Saturn is is represented by rock, right? Um, so Saturn on your south node, it's like the rock represents the reality that we all know, you know, the collective reality, the collective consensus reality. Um, and you know, Gemini is a very in this in this world energy. So. 
I think that when I see a lot like people with this type of placement, when I see your chart, I'm thinking, okay, maybe there, yeah, there's this, there's this, this cycle of being less connected to the divine and less connected to, to, to your own spirit, to your own, your own inner core. And when I see a very karmic chart like this, right. With Saturn on the South node, I'm like, all right, it gives the clear indication to me of someone who can either be like a pebble or who can be like a big rock, right? The pebble, you know, gets pushed all over the place. It, it, it kind of just, it's the whole neutral mind thing I talk about, right? Where, you know, a pebble trigger, triggering, th triggering statement comes, the pebble reacts, and then it's just this perpetuated cycle within different relationships, different dynamics, whatever. But then um, the move of rock, you know, so, so, so it goes back to this metaphor of like you're on, have a tendency to stay on that Saturnian rock on what's known on what's, what's, what, what can be seen, you know, but it's about this big need metaphorically to dive into this like ocean, which is the 12th house, which is Pisces, which is Neptune, you know, Neptune in the 12th house with North node in the 12th house. It's like, this big pull for you to become more spiritual, right? And for you to, 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 to not seek the answers externally for you to understand. And also a big, a big thing also is taking responsibility for, you know, for yourself, for, for, for your actions. And really like, 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 like what in, in, even in a situation where you feel like you were wrong, being able to like really look, okay, like what was my role? Like, I'll give you a perfect example I see with lots of clients, right? Let's say they let like a, a very like kind of narciss narcissistic kind of energy vampire in because a lot of my clients are very empathetic. And they see that they see, you know, the, the guy for or girl for their, their potential as opposed to where they're actually at. And then they kind of end up getting screwed over. And it's very easy to just blame the other person. Because it is them who did all the fucked up things. Maybe they cheated. Maybe they abused the person. Who knows? But at the same time, you know, I would challenge them and be like, okay, what was your role? You know, you 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 know needed to have better boundaries, right? To to not let them in. Um, but I think, you know, when you do have like like the goal i think of everything of astral of of everything right the astrology kind of highlights is self sufficiency because when you're self sufficient you don't need like yeah a relationship's nice right of course but you don't need you don't rely on it 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 goes from um you know a, I, I wouldn't call it a, a desire yeah a desire it goes from an obsession and need dependent need to a, to something that would be you know if it adds to my life cool if not i'm still good so yeah um another another thing showing up for me is is really yeah there's two things like like taking chances creatively um if there's something you know a talent or whatever it might be that you feel like innately just because like when I started astrology, I, I did not know, you know, I just started like, it just was just passion. That's what I'm trying to tell you is like, I'm your astrologer. And it, the irony or the, the interesting thing is that your North node, where you're trying to go, as I repeat, I, 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 I like repeating things are very important. What you're like, where the, the, the metaphoric mountain never climbed is literally 12th house, Pisces, which I'm Pisces sun in Sagittarius. I'm a Sagittarius moon. So it's very linked to how I am. So um, mysticism, you know, really, 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 really philosophical thinking, but also action, you know? And that's what the Chiron is kind of blocking. And it makes me think that like, there's some kind of difficult karma with, you know, most likely the mother um could be both parents because Saturn's there but like you know I, I told you that one one of the one one of the the, the um 
the sun is is in a good a good aspect or a free flowing aspect to the nodes. But that also actually that gives me a new idea. Oh, I like this. So my new idea from a completely different perspective is that your ego, your sense of identity, right? Your sense of belonging in the world, your sense of being successful, of of uh you know of accomplishments, all that, you bring you brought in many of these talents to be very inventive, to be very you know, like, like sociable to really just kill it in, in these areas of life, but you haven't given enough to the feminine side. That's where the imbalance is, right? And even, you know, there is a quincunx of uh, moon and Jupiter exact. But a co close quincunx of sun and moon, which usually I start the reading with. But Aquarius Virgo is a very you know you had the 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 rising in Cap. You know you have two very different energies. You have two different mouths to, to feed. They're very different. And like I said, I, I think I've defined one very clearly. That's very much about um, you know doing things in your own way. Um, getting out of the conditioned past, you know, almost like like really grounding yourself in in your own self, where you're not relying on other people, success, but not you know like like also redefining how you see success. But then the Virgo Moon is so different than the Aquarius Sun, right? Because the Aquarius Sun. Aquarius is very detached, ruled by Uranus, it's very alien energy. But then Virgo is it, it, it's it's not a, it's one of my favorite signs, by the way. Um there's just a tendency to, for there to be lots of perfectionism with the moon there. And lots of like self criticism. And um with the square of Saturn, you know, there could be like, yeah, lots of issues with, with um with with vulnerability, with with allowing your true feminine side out. So with Jupiter, the most favorable planet on your sun, it's very, and trying yourself note, it's very obvious that that's mo more likely favored, but you have to feed both mouse, sun and moon. So Virgo, the way to really, really handle Virgo energy is through understanding that you know, it's the opposite sign of Pisces. It's a very, very mystical sign. While Pisces represents cosmic um, magic, Virgo is earth magic. Um, and, you know, just just really the more mindful you can become, which this, this, the Mars, you know, in, in Taurus can, can help that for sure. Of different cues you have, of different thoughts, you know, like like I I, I keep I, it's so funny because I, I I keep getting these clients who have these like I told you before like these random as fuck things in common, you know, like like South Node conjunct Saturn, like I had so many in, like in the last five readings, majority. So I always feel like I'm meant to like I get these people like different people specific times you have specific similarity which is very synchronistic so for this one i think it's a lot more about um you know it, it's it's a lot more about writing down your like self-limiting beliefs you know therapy is very good for for um, therapy or any kind of healing i do astrological counseling just like why if you're ever interested and by the way also i, I need to also preface everything i've said in this reading with the fact that this is not like this is just probability. Like there is a high and a low energy manifestation to every single thing I've said. Right. So that's why I do the follow ups and I like to do follow ups to the current astrology because that's where we can, you know, speak live about everything. Um, so, 
so 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 but yeah so that that's like that's 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 one part um and then you add the venus right as i spoke about before which is with on team virgo and the, just the capricorn energy earth and um you know that is is really you know with with the mars and oh wow you have two two grand trines right yeah you have a, a air and an earth grand trine very interesting which creates like a quite yeah the two grand try and just just speak to talents in in this two realms um and the interesting part is that the earth one is in firehouses so that should help with some of that some of that need needing to like kind of like move past you know, beliefs that that one can't do it one can't move past one can't move forward one can't reach their goals blah 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 <clears throat> um yeah third house mercury in pisces is very interesting because it's like combining logic and intuition um so that's like another element right but the biggest thing i think is 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 how you access your there's this very bright air part of your chart as i said and it's how you access that and you how you find this unique purpose you have while also having catering to your emotional needs, right? Um, and not just uh, kind of letting one run amok because the moon can be harder to see, right? The moon, the moon is the unconscious. So in Virgo, you know, you, you, you might not see these tendencies you might have. And um, yeah, just like with love in general, I just feel like yeah, there's just there's just um, a lot of desire for independence and individuality. Um, like you need someone that you can be with them and still feel completely like you're on your your specific life path like they don't like like throw you like you know they don't have to believe in everything you believe in in the exact same way but they they, they can't you know they, they need to to kind of give you that space and that freedom maybe like it's like a kind of i don't know different type of relationship an aquarian type um, but yeah, there's that, 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 that fine line between codependency, which goes back to your North node of needing to find, you know, find things within yourself, find, find, find that, 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 that light within yourself, find that wisdom, that higher truth. And your moon in the ninth house also wants that to find you know, the emotional need to find higher truth and to travel to the sound of the third. And then you take all of that and you put it into your career, into your dharma, you know, all the things you learn as you've expanded yourself. Like, so you're really definitely here to expand yourself and your understanding of truth. 
but then there's also a very car it's like a very like two sided chart. It's like there's that side. Well, there's more than two sides. But then and then there's this very like kind of heavy, potentially heavy. Um. So I actually wrote about this the other day. It's actually kind of a cool metaphor that I made up, where I was like, it was like about you know the this like wanting wanting. I was talking about. I was just writing, rewriting. I was like, I want to fly, but it seems that there's chains or bricks, you know, attached to my ankles or something, something like that, you know? And then I, I wrote like, isn't it worth really examining what those bricks are all about? And that's kind of something I could see that could show up here because like the Aquarius Jupiter part could really just be like, because Jupiter, like Aquarius can really have that energy like it's all good you know what i mean like it's all good there's no issues but the moon is always running the show you know so um learning self-love learning you know self-compassion learning understanding your inner self your inner cues your you know like getting into like buddhism stuff like you know, you invite, they say you invite your demons in for tea. So instead of running to them, you, through meditation, you invite them in and you give them names and you might have like a voice. Oh, this is my, um, my overly critical voice, you know? Oh, you, maybe, maybe where does it come from? You know, you're curious about these things and you write about them because you have a third house, um, Mercury. Maybe it's poems, you know, maybe you're a very talented poet. And all in all, you know, when we talk in psychology about a split, you know, this is this is kind of how you, how you can bring this together. But yeah, as I said before, I, I do do astrological counseling. I, I do have a few spots left um, where I combine my two masters in psychology with astrology. And I only really tell that to people where it's like a really just a chart that I'm just like blown away by how many different factors exist. Um, because like in another sense, like this could go a completely, like it's so undetermined. Like a lot of times I, I have a, a pretty good idea of like how someone most likely like their life has gone. Right. I mean, everyone has amazing free will, but like, I always like think, okay, if someone's come to me, uh, they've, either they've like they've they've usually over, overcome a lot i'm not gonna say that they're they're perfect you know like some people come to me because they really just need help but like i feel like i attract a type of client that's more ready to hear the truth like the rugged real real truth you know what i mean like there's some fluffier astrologers out there like because like i've been telling you all this stuff right but i haven't talked about the potential for how good a virgo moon can 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 uh, work out you know even if it's square saturn that could just have been like you know issues with vulnerability and depression that then got um worked on and then it led to someone who is really able to meet their, their needs emotionally who's very emotionally resilient who's very very you know virgo moon very uh giving very loyal um who might be someone who has leaned into that kind of earth magic side of virgo moon you know with the herbs and working with the earth and and, and, and they, they can almost feel more like pisces and pisces moon skin sometimes you know it's a very magical sign virgo but like yeah there's definitely some work to be done and i also i just want to say like i know i've said it you know the, the black moon lilith and capricorn on the venus is also very very like witchy energy you know um, and you have to just watch out for, for kind of, cause like as a Capricorn rising, it usually goes, I, I think Capricorn rising is, and by the way, I have no idea what you look like. I'm just saying, but it's a pretty sexy rising sign, like for females, at least that I, I, like I've noticed, and this is it. Like I, I was told this, uh, the other day by my friend and, my friend astrologer she said that and i was like you know you're you're right like 
they kind of are like a lot of them like look almost like Scorpio because a lot of them have Midheaven Scorpio and you have Midheaven Libra. So it's like, you know, very good too. It's Venus for Midheaven, right? So there is lots of potential for you to be like a doing something like I'm doing, you know, um, Aquarius rules astrology on your Midheaven. And also sometimes Uranus, it's not until later in life that, that the person with the Uranus on the Midheaven or the heavy 11th house figures out their real life purpose. You know what I mean? So with a chart like this, I would imagine that it would take them some real, real time, real, real time and lots of karma to work through before the gifts can come. Um, and yeah, to, to talk about the Black Moon Lilith, you know, it, it, I, I've just seen that play out as kind of dominance, um, you know, dominance, bossiness, um, yep, nice vision now. And um, just, hmm, one second. Yeah, just having like a massive, in, some people with the first half talking about it, they don't realize how big of an impact um, they have, you know, the individual has on people around them, right? Um, and it's really about claiming your own your own feelings and um and it, it also like um it can make someone who who can like affect like their the people around them a lot yeah like with their like like dark feelings and energies so um it's about claiming once again claiming taking responsibility for your own feelings and, and breaking the cycles of blame and different self-defeating be behaviors right um so Yeah, it can make someone like a great counselor for others, a great someone with lots of wisdom. And yeah, it's all about self understanding and self acceptance. Um, and with Capricorn, yeah, like I said, like someone who who wants who likes to be in charge. Um, but like like I said earlier, also like um, you know, it's a very serious energy. Um, so people can see you as, as that your ascendant sign is is more serious than you might be. You know. Um, although with double earth in your big three, um, I think that like, you know, humor is, is an area that, you know, like, uh, is, is, it could, is very healing, you know, laugh, laughter is very healing. So, um, yeah, l learning to loosen up a little bit is very powerful with that. Now with the square now this one not everyone talks about as being as important as i talk about it being but neptune square um mercury because it's 0.53 right yeah so um there can be issues also with like uh discrimination right um and also one thing i forgot to, to talk about is that it can it can make the the um lots of difficulty with like um what your opinions and thoughts are it can be very vague there can be confusion around them difficult to pin down like what you think and um, another thing that's the thing i forgot to talk about is that you definitely have a need okay this is huge i'm happy i'm saying this I, I, you definitely have a need for a long time um because as a 12th house north node it's showing me that you haven't had enough of that in past lives like because that's really with your neptune there your dream life will be very very uh like incredible like dream journaling anything with like with you know with with uh meditation or, or just anything like that can be huge right but a lot of people with that can feel very overwhelmed by the undercurrents of the world right um and there can be escapist tendencies here whether it's daydreaming and fantasy, you know, fantasy world kind of just, or, or just like not accepting reality, not looking at, at things, you know? 
Um, but it, it makes one very compassionate, which is one of the beautiful things about having Neptune in 12th, which is where you want Neptune. You want Neptune in the house of, of Pi Pisces, of, in, in, its, in its domain house. So that being a strength, um, you do have any other domain, like have like plants in there. Natural houses. Yeah, and then and then interestingly enough, you have Mercury, albeit in Pisces, but in the third house of Gemini. So it's a mercurial house. Three and six. More three, though, in my opinion. So, you know, that makes that square even more wild. And, you know, I know a lot of people with it. And I definitely have seen how misunderstood they can they can feel and, and how difficult it can be for them to truly like show themselves, you know? Um so yeah, it really really kind of add throws that that yeah, that, that it has like a very strange effect on the mind, you know? Um and it's like the lens through which you you see reality is very like yeah like just very different you know, um, and it can ha it can have a very harming effect on relationships. Um, like I said, like around lots of misunderstandings can come. So it takes like a very like um patient and compassionate partner, right? Um, but it's also like people who have this can be like you know the master of illusions. Um, like tricksters, magicians, entertainers, right? Um, poets, as I said before, you know, artists, very amazing for like having your your brain Mercury connected with Neptune, and already your Mercury in, in Pisces can make you an amazing person when it comes to art, creativity, and your own. It might be the most random kind of creativity, cause Uranus, right, on the midheaven. But what can happen in close relationships is that confusion can come um, when there's issues with like uh, the basics of language, right? So I, th I told you about like the high concepts being easy to understand. Now your south node in Gemini, meaning like your past life tendency to be good in Gemini, which is about the mind and in, in the third house will help this. So it won't be as pronounced as it typically would, but still um, the fact that it's wearing Neptune and, and it's already in Pisces, you know, it's, it's definitely going to show up. Um, so it's all about keeping it simple, you know, and in, in, in your relationships, having re like communication that's very like, hey, this is like what I understood, like reality checking in psychology is what we call it. You know, this is what I understood. This is like how I interpreted what you said. Like, you know, is, is that true? Um, yeah, so it's like at the higher level, you do very well, but the ordinary level like even th things like giving instructions or like putting together like an ikea couch can be difficult for uh, mercury pisces i would know i suck at that stuff um so yeah there's a need to like develop like a sh more strict control over the mind um and also with any kind of contract legal matters anything with the government be very careful always use professionals that don't get fooled like very like really like you know be careful with who you trust with anything uh legal um, and this comes back to like, you know, when you have this as a kid, oh, this is one of my, my, my toughest charts in a while. Of course it happens when I'm doing a, a day reading, which I'm trying to like get myself better and better at doing. Oh, this bunker kind of, I don't know. I kind of like it in here in a weird way. It's like timeless. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, so this is like another thing where some, like as an Aquarius, you know, a lot of them feel misunderstood when they're young, right? But when you, you know, with this, super misunderstood. Um, and it can, like I said, there can be like, you know, insecurities of a, of a mental or nervous type. Um, and, you know, one can think that they're not intelligent because, you know, the Mercury um, and Pisces, even in the third house, which is really good for intelligence. So it can, can kind of push that away. Hope, you know, I'd be curious to know, but a lot of people with Mercury and Pisces, they are like, super smart artistically but they might struggle with um you know like very earthy stuff but then you do have that that earth energy which will help you with that 
So I'm curious to know how it all comes together. So many potentials in your chart. Like, goddamn. Like, wow. There's so many, so many potentials. Aquarius, Sun, Virgo, Moon. Oof. With Capricorn rising and retrograde Venus the first. And then everything is trying. And then South Nose and Gemini. So there's like in Saturn, you know, so Saturn's right there also. So it's like big about throat chakra, third chakra, right? Uh, those two chakras for sure. And also the third eye, you know, about like that's what the Mercury one is. It's about the throat and the third eye. And then also the crown, you know, about connection to everything, connection to 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 to, to all to God. Um but yeah, so with with the kind of misunderstood energy, you can rely a lot on your fantasies, be really sensitive to any kind of criticism or rejection. So it's really important to find like other spiritual or artistic types um to hang around, people that really get you. Um also you have to really not um get involved in things like lies, fraud, you know, cults, drug abuse. Like these kind of things. What's another one? Like a lot of people with this can get really, really deep into conspiracy theories. Uh, they can believe people. Like when I say cults, it's like like more of just like like false prophets, you know. But with that said, what a lot of people don't talk about about this this uh, aspect is that every aspect is meant to be made into a superpower. So when you have this. You put these two together, you have someone who can, who has this, this groundedness of all the earth, who has this intellectual ability, this ability to, to speak to all different kinds of people and to, to really also hopefully like use that in the, in, in the ways of, 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 of um, experiencing more, right? Which is because it's in the fire houses. Um, and all that, and then the Capricorn energy that you put out is your is your ascendant, which makes you seem very responsible, seem very like sometimes cold and serious, right? Which matches your moon in Virgo, which you know is a difficult moon sign for sure. We'll definitely have to talk about that in the follow up. Um, which, by the way, for the follow up, I don't know if I told you, nearly everyone does the same thing instead of just like the hour, which I believe you got the follow up. I don't have in front of me. Um, I believe you got both. Nearly everyone does this, so I would highly suggest you can tell me if you want if you want to or not. But choice A is just the follow up. It's already paid for. It's an hour. We talk about you know nail chart. But you you mentioned something about transits. I, I looked at the email and wanted to know about the current astrology. And uh, so that is usually around three fifty ish. I'm down to give it to you for two fifty, and that's like a combined. It combines with the live follow up. So I basically take out a date in my calendar just for you. It would likely be after it would, yeah, not for sure, but likely be after the 20th um, when I'm back in Romania, because it's just, there's, I'm doing thing after thing here. You know, it's a miracle. I was, I was even able to like, you know, get this done today. Um, and this might be like the last day I get any astrology done for maybe I'll like be able to like write an article or two in LA, but like, yeah, it really is like the last last day, or like yeah, for, for maybe the rest of the year. Who knows? Um, so I'm gonna go hard. It's only two two p.m. I might just go all day, like I have to. Yeah, I need to write an article or something. But anyways, um, yeah. So two fifty is the price I'll give you. Um, you can let me know, and we'll have a three a three hour session. Hour one follow up wherever it needs to go, you know, cementing the information, you, you know, you bring, you know, your, your, any questions and, and really like, <laughs> I want to know about all this chart. Like this is, this is one of these charts that like, I'm like, yo, this is all over the place. Like I really want to know because it's a very hard evolutionary intent. So I'm very curious where you're at with that. And it's interesting to me that, that relationships were such a, a prominent theme for you. Um, but then that makes sense with the Venus 
a retrograde. But I think what 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 this what what what, what I'm, when I put all this together, it's telling me like you know I'm telling myself that like you know that if that's an obsession, then it's it's getting in the way, and there's a real need to fix things with to, to work on. But but then the Virgo Moon, when I whenever you use the word fixed, it can it can get them rolling too much, you know. So it's less about fixing; it's more about self acceptance and really truly looking. But like as I was saying, like you know, continue. So yeah, let me let me know if you want to add that 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 reading basically. But like as I was continuing, or without what I was continuing or what I was saying before, you know, this energy uh, can really be like a psychic energy, you know, an ability to really sense the undercurrents. And of course, when I talked about the time alone. There's a huge need. You literally, as a Mercury and Pisces, you, that's the connection with the other side. So you, if you're like in a huge room with lots of people, you might take on other people's thoughts, right? Which, you know, you're not a Pisces moon, but, you know, you could almost like read people's energy, right? Um, and be very in touch with the collective energy. So there, there is this part where it's like, you know, the need to not close off, you know? and um shut down from reality is huge and um yeah so besides that um it's a very 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 interesting chart um it's completely interesting i want to get one other thing and then like what what validates that interestingness even more is the fact that the north node is in the 12th house in sagittarius so it's like, you know, look at me. You follow me for a while, I imagine, or at least a little bit. So what do I represent to you? You know, me at my best, you know, I'm not perfect at all, but like me at my best, you know, what do I try to put out? Because I feel like it is very Pisces Dodge. Obviously, there's lots of Aquarius in there too, and a Leo presentation, but in its core, it's about, well, there's a lot of Aquarius, but you're an Aquarius, so it, it makes perfect sense. So we are very, you know, there there, there are lots of similarities. Um, authenticity, one, not being afraid to be different, and um, always self, like always looking within, writing, right, like self expression, not not doing that self-expression um for the sake like like authentic self-expression not doing it for the sake of, of of likes or views or this or that like i've been doing this for this instagram for like five years you know i didn't used to like get a lot i don't even like really like look at like i i i glare at the likes you know like i, I take a look i don't look at who likes my stuff I, i'm not like that you know i'm like i'm happy to have thirty thousand followers like it just shows how much work I put in. But like, that's not the point. The point is seeing the big picture because there's a tendency to be too in the narrow and the here and now and the little tiny anxieties that like when you look back on them a month or two months later, you're like, why was I fucking caring about that thing so much? So with all this earth in your chart, you have the ability to be very grounded and balance to your routine, you know, um, physically, mentally, emotionally, right? That should be a focus. And Virgo moons have that as an emotional need. The thing is, is that a lot of Virgo moons, they are super perfectionist about that. Like, I'll give you an example. A client of mine, she was, like, I was like, like she was telling me about, like, like meditation. I was like, was like, yeah, I like it. It helps me a lot. I was like, okay, well, let me get like, like we're talking, and I, I kind of like, I get like, I, I was like, I was like, wait, hold on, before you tell me what happened with you and why you quit, what meditation? Let me guess, you were really into it for like, I don't know, ten days, something like that, you know, consistent, you know, you're increasing your time or whatever, you know, like each day, and then that day eleven came and you were just like peace, and then on day thirteen you just. Or day 12, you just like weren't willing to get back up. You know, you're just like, it's a hundred or zero. And she's like shocked. She's like, that was literally like 
so close to what actually happened. It's like crazy you said that. I just guess, you know. Um, so with Virgo Moon and Virgo people, I always challenge them to understand that they will fail at things. And I challenge them on the fact that the most important is not like it's not like the, the the continuous doing and doing and doing is great, but the real test is when you do inevitably in, inevitably fall short. It's to see that self criticism in your head, to understand it, and then get back on that horse. How many times can you get knocked over and then get back on that horse? You know what I mean? That's very hard for Virgo because they want things to be a hundred, a hundred, a hundred, a hundred, a hundred, a hundred. So. I also want to talk about Lilith and Venus. I know I'm going way over time, but whatever. Maybe you somehow karmically deserve it or something. Whatever. I don't, I don't even question. So so Lilith and Venus together. Um, yeah, lots of unconventionally unconventionally um, or unconventional relationship. Um, very sexually charged. But it's really important to like find yeah creative endeavors is is really important. Um, and it makes one very gifted in that realm, that creative realm. I see poetry just all over the place for you. Um, another thing also about Neptune is that filming yourself, like doing like a daily vlog where you don't show anyone, but you just film yourself is huge. Um, can be huge, huge, huge. Hold on a sec. Okay. So yeah, so just 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 the idea like Neptune rules cameras, so just like yeah, doing a daily vlog of yourself and your emotions is like one of the most amazing things. Trust me. And I've had lots of clients who um you know who have responded to me and been um very, very happy. With um, with you know having started that, um, so you know more with this um, yeah, it's like um, it can create like a yeah like becoming like a long like just crazy desires actually pretty much um, but also like magic like rituals and all that kind of like like tantra stuff can be something that that comes up. Um, it also usually makes a woman who wants to be in charge. Um, and someone who, 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 who wants to, yeah, just have things be different, like very Aquarian relationships, like, um, you know, breaking conventions is a strong theme with this one. The in charge thing is kind of, it depends actually with that one. Um, but yeah, really, really like having relationships that like, are different than any kind of like, um, it's like, like societal, societal um, expectations. And there can be some level of like obsession even also, like from you or to you. Um, and it's interesting also that, that there can be like, either like, Someone who has like lots of sexual partners, or someone who's super particular and picky about who they they share that sacred energy with, um, and then it 
goes back so it actually kind of mimics what i was saying earlier about like like uh you know you know this 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 theme there's a theme about control in relationships and i don't even think i even talked about that but capricorn yeah and but like with the whole re rebel you know without a cause like feeling locked in imprisoned by relationships like that is also with this one right like feeling feeling suffocated in relationships so you, there's a huge need for space for you but it's really important for you to communicate that and learn how to learn how to co communicate your your boundaries it's going to be difficult with pisces mercury to do that um so yeah so overall like um it's really asking us to you know when we have this to, to to be true to, to our own values within relationships. Um, like when it comes to like sovereignty and um, yeah, just how harmony and kind of like respect and peace and respecting each other's values are, you know, what, what leads to good relationships. So um, yeah, it's all, it's all about honoring boundaries and really in, you know, in, in relationships without compromising um, your values or the values of, 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 of your mate. So that's a very powerful one. All right. Besides that, um, yeah, just like a really creative energy with Pallas and Capricorn. You can really structure your thoughts very well. Um, very wise. Um, yeah, why? So it, it definitely helps with the um Mercury and Pisces because it can kind of like um make the, help the mind cope well with plans. Um, add some earthiness, earthiness to that. Um, but yeah, and also it goes back to like the male female thing and defying those expectations because, like I said, you you'll you'll come off as very Capricornian. But um, you know, there's there's a whole a whole uh, you know, there is more masculine. Well, yeah, I mean, moon and feminine. There's more masculine. Let's just say so. The feminine part of you, Virgo, is feminine. Is 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 way hit. It's more hidden. Is it's hidden. So it's like people might see you as a way more masculine, and then the North Node, and that's the kind of passive tendency. So okay, I think I've got it. I think I've got everything down. Um, oh yeah, then Sun Square Mars also. That one is just like about like having a, a potential for a hot temper, and like really, really needing to like have like a like some kind of like physical exercise, some kind of way to to, to release it all. Um, and talk about that. Talk about that. Talk about that. Talk about that. And yeah, of course, I already said Mars fifth, like a strong drive to express yourself creatively. Um, can create also like very independent children. Um, and then in love, Mars and Taurus is like, it, you know, it gives like strong, like kind of sensual desires. Um, and, you know, it, ma it makes one want to go get money. It's very good for, you know, it, it makes one, you know, really, really like, uh, want you know, want that, want the you know, want, want to work really hard and they're able to work really lots of celeb celebrities, fa famous, successful people have, you know, like Mars and Taurus, Mars and Capricorn, like they can really like, like work like a reliable course over time. And also they can be quite stubborn if opposed, but you know, you're an Aquarius. So, but like that does go with like the Virgo thing where it's like, you know, the, the, if we ever did do astrological counseling, I would really focus on parts work. Um, of kind of like defining the different parts and giving them names and stuff. Cause like this, this one definitely works with like the Virgo part. All right. Um, okay. 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 Um, yeah. And then Saturn, the six is a good, a good place for Saturn. Um, there could have been uh, health issues early in life. Um, it just, I have it there too. It just gives really good organization ability, ability, um, a need for uh, daily structured work. But yeah, it's really about like finding, like I said, with Uranus up here, you know, in the tenth house, um, you'll really want to like uh, have an unconventional career, um, where you're contributing something original to society, um, 
and you can maybe feel restless within only one profession. So some people, some a lot of people who have this, like they end up like changing careers multiple, sometimes multiple times. And then you have Vesta there too. So Vesta, um, you know, in the tenth house is 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 where you'd want it. Um, it makes one very dedicated to their career. Um, where they 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 approach it with discipline. And even if you don't have a career, it's just your dharma, you know, your greater life purpose. Sometimes for, for some people, it's being a mom. Sometimes it's about spirituality, right? For years, it's in the 12th house. So I could definitely see you being some type of healer for sure. Um, or someone, or it could just be like a very, yeah, but like 10th house Pluto people tend to be like, they're here to make, you know, to do something in the big, in in, in the, in like the, the real world, you know, they're, they're, they're not here to, to yeah. They're here to do something important. Um, very powerful people. So, yeah, and that's another one you have to watch out for perfectionism. In Libra Vesta, you like working with other people. Um, yeah. And. Yeah, Pluto tenth, of course, it's it's just, just um a powerful leader in whatever you know where you choose, um, and you know there can be some some energy of like um of darkness, like kind of past life darkness, I guess you could say, um and fears that may and this goes with like the black and the first like. It's just about like not being overly dominant when it comes to your career, right? Um, and really understanding what real power is, right? And then finally, vertex eighth house. You know, it's through your death, rebirth, transformation, through your your deep inner work. And in Leo, also, so if you also maybe if you have children, um, or expressing that inner child, expressing your creativity, that's like what. Like, but also diving into the esoteric and diving deep into yourself, that's where your your uh, doorway to higher awareness is. Um, and yeah, having the midheaven in Libra, like you'll like to like be in a very like um, beautiful work environment. Um, it could something related to like uh, beauty, harmony, balance, you know, a lot of times the arts, um, but not necessarily Libra is also like, you know, business um but like like overall like like the one thing i'll say is like a harmonious work environment for sure and yeah i said higher on the fourth house so that's like uh you know feeling rejected by your family early in life pain painful in her life um so but then you have the ability to really help others heal that um but yeah i talked about the fear of self-assertion which sometimes People are overcompensating by attempting to be first at everything. So, yep. And let's see this before I finish. Such a long reading. I didn't even use my timer. I can't imagine. It took me a little bit to get really going because there's just so much. Okay, so let's just see. Mm, okay, so Urania, an asteroid that rules astrology is close to your ascendant. It's not so close, but it's within, you know, two and a half degrees. So perhaps astrology, you know, like literally Urania is about like astrology, astronomy, anything like related to the cosmos. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And then series series i mean talk about series like kind of like your second moon almost but not as important obviously it's like just like you know how you, how you feel nurtured and how you nurture so in the second house in aquarius um you know you you feel uh you feel that 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 cared for and all that when you um when others accept and encourage your sense of like individuality um and you also feel lots of comfort when you're surrounded by groups of people who um, um, who are more like eccentric and more different. So, and you can really teach others to like accept their own like eccentric selves. Um, also, series in the second house can make one give 
like generously when it comes to their money and possessions. Um, sometimes they, that, that's kind of how they care for others. Uh, you you may also really like tampering yourself by you know like, like enjoying the luxurious items. Um, but yeah, there's a need to like not become too attached to that. Oh. Okay. Let's see here. I have anything on this. So Antares is exactly one of the most powerful fixed stars is exactly on your Neptune. So I have to look deep into like the old. Let's see if there's anything on this. This is from a long, this is from like old, old books. There's very little info. So it's this, so, so take it for, for, for what, what it is. Shrewd, cunning, unbalanced, and mentally unsound. Secretive, but apparently candid. Dishonest, a tendency for theft. Economical, untruthful, strange religious ideas, evil environment, gains through hard work, sudden and unexpected injury can occur. Um, issues that can come through uh, enemies who will escape retribution. So a lot of those have like very like dark like like um, explanations, but you know, I I would I would just say that um, it would just add because squaring your your you know, it, 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 I, I like the the parts that that really like um stood out to me is just yeah just um, it it can be it, it's a rural star so it can be turned into like you know, like the part about gains through hard work, um. And, and just about like that shrewdness, that that cunningness, um, also like very secretive, can't but very candid. And there can be, but there can also be yeah a tendency like like the low Antares can be like theft and and untruthful and stuff like that. So yeah, um, okay. So let's see here. Karma can jump to your Mercury. Wow, of course, exactly on it. So that's just speaking about how, um, you know, everything with your mind and and, and like just the, like like the fact that you know your South Node's in Gemini, and then you you know, so you have this Mercury and Pisces square to Neptune for a reason because you know you're meant to go you're meant to really dive into like the kind of like esoteric realms. And then a more on the IC, so that is really beautiful. It's not a very powerful one on the IC, but it's still it's about unconditional love. So it can really give lots of unconditional love for family and for kind of like you know the you know uh, and even give that at your core within you. Um. Okay. Hades conjunct Mars, so that can create someone who. Um, you know, is very, very powerful, but you don't want to fuck with them. Um, and let me actually look, look up and see. Yeah, because Hades is the planet of the underworld. So it definitely, um, Yeah, it's like often within like the, the start of the life, like some kind of darkness, um, deep fears, anxieties, all that stuff. Um, so it can make someone somewhat sinister with like deeply buried hurts, but um, also very like, you know, in a positive sense, it's like very occult, very like into the esoteric. Um, it can be related to like antiques. Um, like finding treasures. Um, in the spiritual emotional realm, Hades is that kind of darkness that we we may feel from time to time, where there's there's a hopelessness or despair, 
where there seems to be no way out, no options, where the power of Hades over us feels absolute. But again, it's also in the resolution of these issues that drives some of the most beautiful and powerful healing expressions of Hades. Let's take a look, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, lots of artists have this. They're showing you here. Um, so yeah, I mean, with Mars, it kind of just takes you down to kind of, um, you know, the underworlds. Okay. Let's see. But it's also very good for 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 um healing, you know. Anyways, um, yeah, like regenerative powers. One second. So, okay, this, that. Mm hmm. That's not. Yeah, that, that's right on it. Is that Beetlejuice? Yes. Interesting. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Beetlejuice on Saturn. And then I think that should be it, right? And I already talked about the nebula and the moon. Lust conjunct Pluto. That's crazy. Lust is like about just it's very like sexy and like uh, energy. Um, it's very like I'll just tell you an example from my life. My girlfriend has lust rising, and like people just have like an obsession, like like become like obsessed with her. Um, in a very like prim primordial like sexual way, even if she's not putting the energy out it just is you know but that's not her sentence so having pluto there can make one really like have to deal with those types of issues you know um like like faithfulness um like not being like having tests when it comes to that um so we'll end this i have no idea how long this is gone um so I don't know if I'll find any information on this. Okay, so Saturn conjunct. So Beetlejuice is usually like a quite good one. Um, and so Saturn, it says shrewd once again, cunning, craft, craftily dishonest. Remember these, like take these with a with a pinch of salt. Okay, because these are these are these are stars that these are definitions from a long time ago. Um, so you'll have to you'll have to feel into yourself, you know, how how, how that's shown up. The shrewd, cunning, craftily dishonest, treacherous to friends, eventful life with many ups and downs, eventual wealth, but not with comfort. And it, and it has a unfavorable for domestic. Affairs. All right. Well, I think that is everything. Long as fuck reading. Um, but thank you for your patience. I never choose <laughs> who has readings that last this long, but I guess it was you. Um, let me take a screenshot. So definitely let me know about setting up. the uh if you want to, like like and it'll, it, it'll definitely be when um i mean actually not for sure i might be able to find time but it's, it's just really hard um but yeah i'll be back the 20th and uh the earlier you know uh one schedules the uh the session you know reading and follow like or follow-up 
and current astrology, it, like I said, 250 more if you're interested in that or just the follow up, the earlier the better. But like, um, yeah, it's hard to get all those now. So, okay, screenshots taken and we're good. All right, long reading. Holy shit, this might be a record. Probably not. Okay. Ciao.